Hello everyone, this is Pojo, and remember how I said that we were done with spoilers until Jack's Bounty released this week? Well, uh, looks like I lied, there is one more. Uh, Brian Kibler released one last spoiler on his stream, and it is Copper Hall Bailiff, as you can see right over there. And uh, yeah, it's a really, really interesting, really impressive card. Uh, this is the first card that has had less of a build around me archetype going on with it, and more of just like a straight up, just good, like all around card that you can use. So. Let's go ahead and look at the card a little bit, and we'll talk about some things that we noticed. All right, first off, this is a 2-3 three for 3 with War Cry, and that is actually a pretty good stat line. 3 cost 2 threes are not completely out of the question. They're decent enough to actually spar with 2 drops, which is nice. Like, being able to block a Crown Watch Paladin or a Rakano Outlaw is really quite effective, and uh, that's just, like, with the War Cry alone. So I think overall that effect is pretty strong. Uh, it doesn't need to have three power here, and having two power is not a too big a deal since you have that war cry effect and you have a lot of good, like, attacking in type stuff. The art we can see is from the old Auric Bailiff card from Closed Beta. Uh, it's a lovely piece of art. I'm glad they reused it. Uh, so, yeah, not too much to note about that. Uh, the influence cost is two green, and that means that at three and two green, we are competing with a slot for Valkyrie Enforcer. And you can double up, of course. You can go like really good mono green decks with this, this type of deck, but Rakano is going to have to splash heavily green if it wants to run both of them. And that's something that's important to consider if you're going to be running a Rakano deck here. I think this card is very, very strong, and it's always nice to have like an extra Warcry unit that you can slot into a Rakano deck. So you might even see it replace Valkyrie Enforcer in those slots, although it does not have the same versatility that Valkyrie Enforcer does in answering threats and getting rid of particular problems for your deck. So there's a chance that this card might not see play for that reason. I think that's pretty unlikely as the overall stat line is very, very good. Finally, we have that summon effect. Enemy units get negative one strength. So this, of course, is a permanent effect. Uh, as soon as you put it down, it immediately just neutralizes Jito decks in a way that's really, really satisfying. Uh, like, put it, giving a Jito token or, like, any sort of Grenadine drone, any sort of, like, one-drop unit, zero attack, makes it very, very difficult for your opponent to ever get any profitable damage out of that. He can throw down a Bandit Queen, but it just becomes a 1-1 one -one with Quick Draw, which is really not very threatening. He can throw down a rally and attack in, but he has to throw the rally first, which means that he loses a lot of the surprise value out of that. Which means that Copper Hall Bailiff is a really strong answer to that token deck archetype, and we might see token deck archetypes take a sharp nosedive after Jex Bounty releases. So meta-wise, this card is going to be pushing things. Um, in addition to being played in a standard sort of Rakano archetype, uh, the other thing about this card is that it is very, very powerful in pushing that archetype into the mid-range. And I talk about this a lot. I really do like it when Rakano cards are pushed into the mid-range because there's a lot of really interesting and fun Rakano cards that you can play at 4 and 5 that uh, often don't see play in the current lists. Copper Hall Bailiff is very, very good for stalling out to that particular aspect, and it can also continue to stack up War Cries, which means that you're more likely to see decks with Navani in them, with uh, Soulfire Drakes at the top, of course, uh, with Akaria, with basically anything big and ugly in Rakano. Um, this card also, of course, works in green and yellow, although I'm not sure if there's too many benefits to it. It could be quite decent in a Combray aggro type list. It seems not terribly well suited to a Combray mid-range style, but that negative one ability for enemy units is pretty cool and could end up being very useful. That summon effect, in addition to granting like a fairly minimal, like it is a fairly minimal removal option, although clearing tokens is definitely a very big deal, and being able to do that in green early is also a very big deal. This is actually a good card for control decks that are going to be trying to run up to Harsh Rule, because they can, of course, plop this down and use it as like a semi-lightning storm type effect and add your third board clear or at least like board removal reduction to like your green yellow decks and your green blue decks so uh, not sure if it's going to see a lot of play for exactly that reason because uh, the stat line and the war cry don't particularly benefit the control style but 
uh, it's possible, and it's certainly even an idea. Now, of course, this effect does pop Aegis, and being able to pop every single Aegis is really, really useful. So this card can see a pretty solid use as like a counter Aegis tech. So if you are seeing a lot of Huru decks, Copper Hall Bailiff is gonna help a lot with this because there's a, a Huru Aegis archetype out right now that uh, isn't really gonna like it when this thing is popping all of their stuff and developing the board while also still allowing you to like get better removal on units with Aegis. So yeah, uh, the thing that I would describe it most as is anti Rakano Rakano because as a three cost two three, uh, it's just in the way of Copper Hall, uh, of uh, sorry Crown Watch Paladin and Rakano Outlaw, and of course it pops the Aegis on Crown Watch Paladin. It reduces the attack of everything that you play, even if it gets torched. It has a significant impact on Rakano's ability to rush you down and get you into like a bad situation. So if you're playing two Rakano decks against each other, the one with Copper Hall Bailiff is the one that's maybe more likely to push across for the lethal that it wants and play the slightly slower game. And yeah, so that's uh, that's the most interesting thing about it is that it pushes Rakano into a slightly slower game. Uh, that can be to its benefit if you are playing the slightly slower deck than another aggro deck and you are running cards like Copper Hall Bailiff, you are favored to win those matchups. If you're playing the slightly slower deck against, say, a slow control deck, then you're definitely not favored to win those matchups because uh, the control deck is just going to outvalue you. But this is a card that definitely screams value in a way that Rakano cards usually don't. It's not an aggressive card, but, well, it's a somewhat aggressive card, but it's more focused on that value-oriented prospect of reducing the size and strength of your opponent's units while giving you those war cries over and over again, and that I think is one of its really most interesting strengths. As a card, it slots into a lot of different things. All you have to do is make sure that you have the influence requirements for it, and that's pretty exciting to see. So I'm looking forward to seeing this card on the ladder. It should be a really, really fun thing to see because it's going to make some really interesting new deck archetypes available. Uh, it's a very powerful card overall, I would say, and uh, I'm pretty excited about it. All right, so once again, Jax Bounty releases this week, and this has been Pojo with uh, Eternal Card Breakdowns. Feel free to like or subscribe if you liked it, and uh, we'll be back with more Jax cards as soon as they have actually released. I'm pretty sure there's no more spoilers this time, guys. Thanks for watching.